Well, <laughs> good evening, everybody. Turned out nice again, hasn't it? Well, it may have done for me, but I don't know about you, because you've got to stick me for the next 35 minutes or more, because we've no girls, no dancers, no acrobats, no conjurers, not even a guest star, only me and the youth. But I'm going to tell you a few home truths I've never told in public before, and probably sing you a few songs that you've never heard before. Anyway, I'd like to start off with a nice, bright little song called It Serves You Right. <laughs> Since the days of old, the navies ruled the waves. For years they've told the world that Britain's never shall be saved. The navy still remembers, and you'll often hear them say what Nelson told Napoleon upon the Malgate. It serves you right, you shouldn't have joined the jolly well serves you right. It serves you right, you shouldn't have joined your man of incident type. You might have been in civic street instead of in the fight. But it serves you right, you shouldn't have joined the jolly well serves you right. And and it's no use kicking up around Because you're nobody's sweetheart now You can weep and sigh and pipe your eye But still you're in the fight It serves you right You shouldn't have joined the jolly well serves you right I used to be a chimney sweep in dear old Wigging town I used to do the ladies down the street for half a crown But now I don't get nothing for the little jobs I do I wish I was in Wigging sweeping Mrs. Jones in blue but it serves me right, I shouldn't have joined it, jolly well serves me right. It serves me right, I shouldn't have joined, I might have been sitting tight. I thought in every port I'd get a cuddle every night. But all I've done is cuddle a gun and work up an appetite. And it's no use kicking up around. Because I'm nobody's sweetheart now. There's a draft around me fore and aft, me jump as much too tight. I've got barnacles on me binnacle and it really well serves me right. Thank you. Well now, <clears throat> of course most people know that I was born in Wigan and don't say it serves you right because I'm very proud of Wigan. Every time I drive through it in the car, I raise my hand and say, thanks very much, Wigan. But of course, a lot of people don't know it, but I do write, or help to write, most of my own songs. And a few years ago, in the 30s, we got an idea for a song all about Wigan, because it's very famous for coal mines. Now, we have this little song written, and it's called, Georgie Was a Miner. <laughs> Now Georgie was a miner and one day it came to pass He met Nelly Murgy, toyed a gravely sort of lass He did some extra night work just to get a bit of brass He went working down the old coal hole So give me me shovel and me pick Nelly, I'm going down the hole to get the coal With me shovel and me pick me lamp and little bit of wick I'm going down the old Coal hole, down the hole, for the coal. I'm going down the hole to get the coal. With me meat and gravy can, a little bundle in me hand. I'm going down the old coal hole. Sitting on the sofa, George, he said, I've lost my heart. I don't know much about love, but I'll kiss you for a start. He mucked about for half an hour and said I must depart and go working down the old coal hole. Now when he cuddled Nelly, he was often black as ink. And when they did a washing at the laundry, they would wink and murmur by the loops of them. Well, anyone would think she had been working down the old coal hole. Now little Nelly's mother said, I rather fancy you. Fill the loving cup and drink the sparkling eyes of blue. He said, I'll fill your loving cup and fill your scuttle too, cause I'm working down the old coal hole. Now one day little Nelly, she looked worried it was plain. She met him at the pit head with a bundle in the rain. He just took one look at it and he staggered back again. And he tumbled down the old coal hole. 
So give me me shovel and me pick And then I'm going down the road to get the coal With me shovel and me pick Me lamp and me shovel and me I'm going down the old coal hole Down the old hole the coal I'm going down the old to get the coal With me meat and gravy And a little bundle in me hand I'm going down the old Well, I better have a cigarette now. They're provided, you know. I haven't got a match, though. But these, these cigarettes, by the way, are supposed to not you make you cough. There's no tobacco in them, just filters. But honestly, you know, people have said to me many, many a time, how did you start in pictures? Well, have you ever felt that if you got the chance you could do a thing really well, well, that's the way I felt about pictures. And many years ago, I came down to London, and I even wrote my own script, along with Beryl and a man called Arthur Mertz. And we went all round the studios. They'd never heard of George Formby. They didn't even want to hear about him. I went everywhere, but nobody wanted to know at all. So back up to the provinces I went, and we worked around for a long time, and I was playing in a place called Warrington, and a man called Johnny Blakely came round and he said, I'd like to make pictures with you. I nearly grabbed his hand off. Anyway, he said, come up on Sunday and we'll talk it over. So we went up on the Sunday and we talked it over. And he said, yes, I'd like to make pictures, but I haven't got a story. I said, I have. And we brought out this little story that we'd written. It was called Boots Boots. So the whole thing was settled. We came to London and we went to the film studios. Two <laughs> studios, <laughs> one room over a garage in Albany Street. And when we wanted to start making the picture, we had to press a button so that they stopped the engines down below. Well, at the end of 14 days, we'd finished the picture, and it cost a large sum of £3,000. Well, then came the time to sell it. Nobody wanted to buy it. But it did get a world premiere in a place called Burslem. It did, you know, and I'll never forget because I went up there and it, <laughs> it's strange as it may seem, it backed him out when it was a lousy picture. <laughs> oh, it was so dark in places you had to strike matches to see it. <laughs> the courting couples liked it, though. But uh, at that time, Basil Dean, who was making a lot of very big pictures, he was going around the country trying to find out what the different salesmen wanted. And they said, we want George Formby pictures. He said, who's George Formby? He said, look through that window, and he saw a queue up right round the theatre looking at this Boots Boots. So he got them to bring me down to Ealing Studios. I signed a seven-year contract, and that was the start of me making 22 films. And there again, strange as it may seem, everyone was a success. But what I'm getting down to now is, I'd like to sing you a little song out of one of those pictures. It was out of Bell Bottom George. And it's called Swim Little Fish, and it's all about Egbert. This is Egbert here. Now, I'm Egbert's father, you see, and he's going out into the world for the first time, and I'm going to tell him all the little things he's got to get ready for. <laughs> oh, Egbert. <laughs> now, once upon a time, there was a little fish, and he lived in a long, long stream. And to make his way to the great wide world, was this little fish's dream. But a wise old trout, who'd been about, advised him what to do. 
He said fishes wishes won't come true If they dream the whole day through So swim little fish swim on Swim little fish swim on We are too ambitious fishes you and I But we'll get our wishes if we try 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 So swim little fish swim on Swim little fish swim on Blow little bubbles all the long day through And show little troubles that they can't stop you Cause everything in life worthwhile Is hard to get my friend So don't give up and don't give in It's worthwhile in the end So swim little fish swim on Swim little fish swim on Swim, little fella, till your dreams come true And you'll get the very little fish for you You can be happy if you swim, 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 swim Swim, little fish, swim on Now swim, little fish, swim on Swim, little fish, swim on If you are weary at the river mouth Ask for a lift upon the next wave cell So swim, little fish, swim on Swim, little fish, swim on Be very careful and you'll find it pays Mind how you cross the gulf and look both ways A chap can get a good square meal And all that he could wish Now the wise fish goes to smoky rolls a good pulling for fish So swim little fish swim on Swim little fish swim on Always remember mother's good advice Steer clear of fishes who are not quite nice Do nothing fishy fishy swim 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 swim, swim little fish swim on Hey! <laughs> Well, I carried on making pictures, you know, right the way through the 30s, and then along came 1939, and as you know, we had a bit of bother with a fella called Hitler. Well, I, like everybody else, had, I was called up and I went to take my medical. That was the biggest laugh I ever got in my life. When I stripped off, I never knew I had flat feet. And the doctor looked at me, and he gave me a shilling, and he gave me a card which said grade four, I didn't even get in the first three. And he said, you better go entertaining troops. So I went over every war front, I took battle with me of course, and we went everywhere. Well, when I wasn't entertaining troops and making pictures, I was a home guard. I joined the home guard as a dispatch rider. Well, the funny part about it, my postman was always a dispatch rider as well, in the same unit, and he was a corporal. Now, through the week, he used to deliver the letters and say, good morning, sir, your letters. On a Sunday, he was the gaffer. I didn't like that. And our CO was the boss of a gentleman's outfitters in Blackpool, you see. So I went down, I said, hey, will you make me a uniform of officer's material? He said, yes. And I said, when you finish, will you put a couple of stripes on the sleeve for me. Well, he thought it was funny, but he put the stripes on, and the next Sunday morning I turned up as a fully-fledged corporal dispatch rider. I bet I'm the only fellow that promoted myself. <laughs> but that brings me to the next song, you see. Being in the home guard, I thought, well, this is a good idea for a song. So I wrote a song about the home guard. <laughs> <laughs> Beholding me an LDV for battle, I'm just yearning, doing my best like all the rest to keep the home fires burning. Each evening a stiffer start, up and down the street I march. I'm guarding the home of the home guard. I'm guarding the home guard home all night long, steady and strong, doing what I'm told and I can't go wrong. All the ladies I salute, but one old dame was very cute. She wanted to see me parachute. Well, guard is the home guard home. When I shout halt, they shout all stop. If they don't stand just like a rock, they get it where the monkey got the clock. Well, guard is the home guard home. I'm guarding the home of the home guard.
guards, come guards in the home guard home. All night long, steady and strong, doing what I'm told and I can't go wrong. One evening as an LDV, some German soldiers I did see. They ran like hell, but they couldn't catch me. Guard in the home guard home. I was sergeant, nearly had a fit. He found my rifle full of grit. I told him what to do with it while guard in the home guard home. Room retire, you've never any need to roam while I'm guarding, guarding, guarding in the home guard home. Well, now, folks, I'd like to be serious for a minute, if you don't mind. I've got a confession to make. When I was seven, I never went to school from then onwards. Nobody's fault, only my own. And it was a great handicap because I never learned to read and write properly, you see. And um, the only bit of reading and writing I can do is what I picked up myself later on. I'm still a lousy speller, by the way. But that's where Beryl came in, you see. She used to do all my business for me. Because I went away to the stables when I was seven to become a jockey. And I went down to Bishop Canning's. At the age of ten, I had my first mount in a race. I don't know whether it's a record, but I don't know of anybody that's ridden younger than that. 1915, the First World War broke out and it stopped racing in England. So the trainer I was with, we went out to Ireland. And I rode there for five seasons till 1919. Then I came back to Newmarket and became apprentice jockey riding for Lord Derby. In 1920 I went up to Malton and had my last mountain race on a call called Old Chris. And there was me, old at 16. Well just then, at that time, my dad collapsed and died in pantomime at Newcastle. Well that was very awkward and a very sad blow. Because actually he was going to retire start a training stable and I was going to train horses but things, fate stepped in and it wasn't to be so they said to me, well what are you going to do now? I said, well I'm not going back to the racing business, I'm too heavy they said, why don't you go on the stage? I said, what the hell could I do on the stage? they said, well you don't know till you try anyway, I learnt two songs off the records, two of my dad's songs and a friend of his called Fred Harrison he gave me a week's work at the place called the Hippodrome Earlstown. It's a little tin hut near Newton Lee Willers. And uh, Newton Lee Willers is near Wigan, by the way. Wigan's in Lancashire. Uh, well, anyway, I, uh, I didn't go as George Formby. I took my mother's maiden name, Hoy, because my dad's name was always been top of the bill, and I knew I wouldn't be top of the bill the first time. I'd be like that. And I didn't want the name of Formby to be small. I said, I'll use Formby when I top bills myself. And I was lucky enough to do that. Well, at the end of the week, I got five pounds. And then I got what was known in those days as a moss tour. That was one of the big halls. And I worked in this very theatre. I was first turn, three minutes, died the death of a dog. <laughs> oh, yes, it's truth night tonight. And at the end of the moss tour... I didn't get any more work. Of course, they give me that for sympathy out of my dad, you see. Well, I was out of work for three months, and nearly starved. Then I went to what is known as a Niffit show. You know, if it comes in, you get it. If it doesn't, you don't. <laughs> <coughs> well, we ran five weeks, and we finished up in St. West Hartlepool. Then I had a few pals in a show called the Swanee Minstrels, and they said they were going to Castleford. And would I go with them for a week? said we'll give you a fiver well that was a lot of money for me then well I went over to Blackton as a minstrel you see but I didn't go so well I went usually bad and then um, on the Tuesday I met a young woman and I fell for her and uh, well five months later I married her and that was when my luck turned you see I married Beryl and then she knew a man in Newcastle called Thomas F. Connery he used to run reviews he gave me a week's work up there and he liked my act. I don't know why, but he liked it. And he gave me a review contract for five years. Well, I never looked back after that. And I shall always be grateful to Beryl for doing all the business for me, you see. Anyway, I went on, on I went, and I worked, and I worked, and I worked. And, of course, it would take me a month to tell you all the different things Beryl's done for me, but some other time, probably. I'm getting back to the song now. And now I'm going to speak to the kiddies. You know, don't be as daft as I was. 
when you can go to school I could have gone and I didn't but you go to school you do your own work you'll find in later years it'll pay off because I was never blessed with kids of my own and every time I sing this little song well I always feel a bit sad you know day is nearly through you're tired too and I know you've done your best Tomorrow morning you Your daily judge will do So make the most of your night's rest Good night, little fellas, good night It's time to close your eyes and go to sleep A bedtime story, though I could tell You might repeat it by and by So I'd sooner sing a lullaby Someday you'll go your way It may not be an easy fight So don't give in Make up your mind to win Good night, little fellas, good This seems, this seems to be confession night <laughs> because during this afternoon the producer of the show said he was going to put a banjo in the band you see I said well don't do that because they play proper harmony and I only play Chinese harmony you see what I've got to confess folks is that I don't understand music I don't read it or write it although I play these things and of course you see a ukulele is strung in a certain key and I can only play in one key and a lot of my songs are in different keys, so I've got to have a different you for each song. <laughs> you see, nobody's ever heard that before. They think this is a gimmick, all this lot. But the trouble is, sometimes I pick the wrong one up. <laughs> and then it's every man for himself. <laughs> of course, I'm skating on thin ice, telling you things like this, you know. But, ah, that brings me to another song. You know, about 30-odd years ago, I had my first big hit. Well, it's not a bad song. It shouldn't be bad. It's been kept in cold storage all these years. Open the fridge, Wolfie. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> <coughs> Now is a new amusement that is getting all the rage. You'll find that it's good exercise for folks of every age. Now I go there most every night and sometimes take the wife. I've never had so many ups and downs in all my life since I've been sitting on the ice in the ice rink. Sitting on the ice with my skates off. It's the finest fun I've ever had. Put it on the ice, it'll never go bad. There's lots of nice young ladies. And how I like to tease them. If they don't give way or say okay, I sit them on the ice and freeze them. Last night I went out walking with the pretty little miss. She said I like you very much and gave me one big kiss. She was a perfect little blonde and not so very old. She let me hold her in my arms, but blimey she was cold cause she'd been sitting on the ice in the ice rink. Sitting on the ice with her skates off. Oh well hot she must have felt. She sat up on the ice and the ice began to melt. She was so young and pretty, but what a blow that fall had dealt her. We couldn't pick her up in the ordinary way, we had to bring a fire and melt her. Last night I went out for a drink down to the cherry tree. 
I didn't go there by myself, I took some pals with me. We landed home at half past two, I rang the front doorbell. The wife said, where have you been? So I said, you can go to bed, cause I've been sitting on the ice in the ice rink. Sitting on the ice with my skates off, it's the finest fun I've ever had. Put it on the ice, it'll never go bad. The buttons bust off my trousers, I got into such a tangle. I said, heaven help the sailors on a night like this, and never let your braces dangle. Thank you. You'll excuse me, Zinga, this is only water, you know. But just now, I was telling you about my dad. Mind you, I think he went the way he wanted to do. He died in harness, you know. Because in those days, stars had to work a lot harder than we have, you know. In London, for instance, when they came down, they had to work four theatres in one night. That meant eight shows. They'd start at one place, they'd go right the way around and back again. But it was a different business. They could show you ten years' work ahead in the date books. Today, you're lucky if you get ten months. Just depends where you're working. But anyway, I, um, he was a great fellow, you know, really. I wonder how many of you older folk in, that's watching or in this theatre tonight remembers this song. When Egan Smith ran second in the survey last July, I was standing at the corner of the street. A fella dressed in uniform could easily see that I was standing at the corner of the street. He treated me and told me that the country wanted me. In life that Lord, he said I'd look a tree. He gave to me a shilling and I signed my name and then I was standing at the corner of the street. And for standing at the corner of the street, they dressed me up with spurs upon my feet. They put me on a horse's back to teach me how to ride. When I fell off the riding master came to me and cried. However did you come to be a soldier? I replied. I was standing at the corner of the street. <coughs> <coughs> Bronchitis. I'm a bit tight tonight, don't you? I could do with a strengthening bottle. Well, good night, all, and God bless you. Let them love. Give me a call, dog. Well, that was my dad's voice. And he's been dead nearly 40 years now. And that record came out of the BBC library and it was made exactly 53 years ago. Well, he certainly was a great star. I don't think I'll ever be as good as him. But then people say to me, how did you become a star? <laughs> it's a daft question, isn't it? I mean, what do we do? We don't do anything. We don't become stars. You people make us stars. We wouldn't be any good without you. And any of our present stars today, if they ever believe anything different, they're crazy. I shall always be grateful to the public for what they've done for me. But now, we're getting to the end of the show, and I've worked all over the world, and wherever I've been, I've never been allowed to get off the stage without singing three songs. And I don't suppose it'll be any different tonight. I'm not going to tell you which ones they are because you probably know them better than me. <laughs> I wonder what, what does this remind you of? Now I 
the window cleaning to earn an honest bump. For a nosy partner, it's an interesting job. Come on, now it's a job that just to me. A window cleaning you would be if you can see what I can see. When I'm cleaning windows, honeymooning couples too. You should see them villain too. You'd be surprised at things they do. When I'm cleaning windows, in my profession I work hard, but I'll never stop. I'll climb this blinking ladder till I get right to the top. The blushing bride, she looks divine. The bridegroom, he is doing time. I'd rather have his job than mine when I'm cleaning windows. <laughs> And of course, this little fellow will never die. He'll live to his a hundred, I think. <laughs> Mr. Wu was a laundry man in a shop with an old green door. He dying all day, all in and away, he really makes me sore. He's lost his heart to a Chinese girl and his laundry's all gone wrong. All day he'll flirt, got your shirt, that's why I'm singing this song. Oh, Mr. Wu, come on, whistle. What shall I do? I'm feeling kind of like that Chinese laundry blue. This funny feeling keeps round me stealing. Oh, won't you throw your sweetheart overdue? My vest's so short that it won't fit my little brother. And my new Sunday shirt has got a perforated rudder, Mr. Wu. What shall I do? I'm feeling kind of like a Chinese on the blue. And now, folks, probably one of the famous of the lot of them. I'm leaning on a lamppost at the corner of the street in case the third, come on, lady comes by. Oh me, oh my, I hope the little lady comes by. I don't know if she'll get away, she doesn't always get away, but anyhow I know that she'll try. Oh me, oh my, I hope the little lady comes by. There's no other girl I could wait for, but this one I pray any day for. I won't have to ask what she's late for She wouldn't leave me flat She's not a girl like that She's absolutely beautiful and marvelous And wonderful that anyone can understand why I'm leaning on a lamp Or sat the corner of the street In case a certain little lady passes by Come on now, whistle I'm leaning on a lamp Or sat the corner of the street In case a certain little lady That's right Swing it all me Oh my I hope the little lady comes by I don't know if you get away She doesn't always get away But I may have no little right Oh me Oh my I hope the little lady comes by There's no other girl I can wait for I'm leaning on a lamp post at the corner of the street in case of certain Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's the end of the show. And I do hope you've enjoyed it because I have. You know, they say confession's good for the soul, don't they? And I've told you a lot of things that nobody's ever heard before. So don't go telling everybody when you get outside, will you? Because I'll look a right chally if you do that. But anyway, folks.
If you'd like me back again, I have a lot more things to tell you about myself and about another 148 songs to sing. So now I'd just like to say three little words. Good night, good luck, and God bless. <laughs>